Hey guys, welcome back. So as you can see here, I've got a new hardtop 3D printed here. This is my version two design that I've come up with. I've got the STL files on the, my Etsy store and the link is in the description. And the reason for me making these videos is to show people exactly how easy it is to build your own hardtop and how affordable it is with the method that I'm doing here. Um, we're gonna come in well under the cost of an OEM hardtop or even an aftermarket hardtop that you can buy online. So stay tuned and you can see exactly how you can do this yourself. Okay, so to start this project off, you'll need to head on over to my Etsy shop and purchase one of my 3D printable hardtop designs. The link is in the description. Uh, this will allow you to 3D print the hardtop in multiple pieces and you can glue or solder the pieces together or basically melt the pieces together to build the entire shape of the hardtop. Uh, if you don't have a 3D printer, I suggest looking at the Creality printers and just get whichever one fits your budget. I'm not sponsored by Creality, I just like those printers and they're affordable. When choosing a printer, the only requirement to do this project is that the printer needs to have at least a 220 by 220 by 220 millimeter print volume. So once you get your printer, you'll need to get a slicer such as Cura. This turns the hardtop 3D files into G-code, which is what the printer needs to read to be able to 3D print each part. I currently have two different listings for the hardtop files. One is for 220 millimeter printers or bigger, and the other is for 300 millimeter printers or bigger. The 300 millimeter files will have significantly less parts to print since they're quite a bit larger. And this just means less work that you have to do to get all the parts put together once you're assembling them all. After you get your hardtop files for your specific printer, you'll need to load them into the slicer of your choice. The files are pre-saved in the correct print orientation, so you don't have to mess with moving the files around too much in the slicer. As far as the material to use, I recommend PETG or ASA since they're less affected by exposure to the sun and heat than say a material like PLA is. I've included my print settings in the description to help people print all these parts as fast and dimensionally accurate as possible. For the parts that are positioned vertically on the bed, such as this one, I recommend using a raft for the bed adhesion. For the horizontal parts, such as this one, I recommend using a brim. Having said that, you might need to tweak these settings so that your specific printer can print them as best as it can. The total amount of print time should only take about two weeks if you print pretty much non-stop. Uh, expect to use about 7 to 10 kilograms of filament, which can range from about $140 to $250, depending on the brand and the type of filament that you choose.
All right, so after we've got everything all soldered up, all the main pieces are put together and soldered together. We've got the side mounts, the front mount, and then the main hard top piece and the trunk piece. So now all we have to do is line everything up and then solder in the mounting points so that everything lines up good and we don't have any weird gaps or anything. You'll notice as you open your door that the window gets really close there, but that's perfectly normal. You want it close here so that you've got the right distance of mount right here. All right, so I've got the front lined up correctly. The side closes freely and the rear corners line up at the edge of the trunk. So that means we are ready to position the front mounting 3D print. So, I've got these metal mounting plates here. Um, that makes it a lot easier to line up this with the holes that I've got in the 3D prints. All right, now that we've got the front soldered up, it just has to be a few spots here for it to feel a little solid. Um, you don't need it super strong because we're gonna reinforce all this with fiberglass anyway, but we got it in position. We are ready to move on to the side mounts. If you have a soft top uh, rubber seal, go ahead and position that into place to make sure we have a good seal around this point right here because this is the most prone place to water leaking. So right there looks good and we'll get that soldered up. Another thing I recommend is getting some of these clamps so you can clamp the mount all together and make sure it lines up with the window. And it just makes things a lot easier to solder together. Okay, so both side mounts are installed. Everything still lines up with the front mount. Front of the windshield still lines up. Door's still good. The corners of the hard top still line up with the trunk here and here. So we are good to go. So I've gotten a lot of questions about how this trunk works. And the way I did it on my last hard top is probably the same way I'll do it on this one. Uh, just without making a mold because that's kind of the theme we're going with for this entire build is to do it as easy as possible. So the plan is to get some body filler, blend this line into the OEM trunk, smooth it all out, and then we will use this as our mold, add some fiberglass over the top of it, release that off the mold, and that will be our new trunk. So the way the previous one opened was it slides out a little bit and then pivots up. And we'll do the same thing with this one. So the next step is gonna be smoothing this whole thing out with some body filler, getting it all nice and flat, eliminating any of the high spots. I can already see I have a little one here. So we're gonna to have to smooth this whole thing out, get rid of the layer lines, and get it as nice and flat as we can before we start laying up some fiberglass. Thanks for watching.